Welcome to the Shaken Up Show, Playing Away, episode 12. Today we are talking to Mark Armstrong, who is on the board at Garstang FC. So, I'm not going to blather on. Mark, welcome to the Shaken Up Show. Hello there, good to meet you. You too, Mark. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. Fantastic. Well, welcome to the show. I'll get cracking straight away. Can you uh, introduce yourself and tell us about your role at Garstang and a little bit about how you got involved? Yeah, my name is Mark Armstrong. I'm the financial director at the club. I also uh, manage the football club's lottery scheme, which is a, a big fundraiser for the club. Um, on and off, I've been involved in the club for about 22 years. Uh, started off as then got involved as a uh, secretary while I was still playing. Um, and then when we went into the um, Northwest Counties and we became a limited company, I joined the board of directors. Fantastic. Excellent. And for those that don't know and that didn't come last season, can you give tell us where the club is and the stadium name? So the ground's name is the Riverside, uh, obviously because we're by a, a river. Um, and Garstang is a, a market town situated sort of in between Preston and, and Lancaster, probably halfway between the two. Uh, it's a quite nice little market town. Uh, but there's plenty of uh, pubs. Um, like I say, the ground is named after our location, really. Excellent. Um, and on a tweet that one of our media team put out earlier today, uh, they referred to you as the Stang. Is that the club's nickname or do you have an official nickname? Uh, the younger ones probably use the Stang, the older ones probably the Riversiders. So it's Excellent. it's one of them. That the modern era, like hashtag the Stang, the older generation, uh, not so keen on that. Fair enough, fair enough. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. We we have our ups and uh, back and forths about our nickname. We haven't really officially got <laughs> officially got one yet. But, um, you know, I, I won't get into that. I might get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah can you give us any interesting facts about Garstang as a club any weird things that have happened or interesting things that have happened in, with the club over the years um, n- not many weird things that I, I know about um, obviously the club's been about for quite a long time uh, we're over 100 years old um, we started off in the Preston District, then we've moved into the West Lanks and then obviously into the Northwest Counties probably about five seasons ago now. Um, that's a, a sort of very potted history. We've won the Lancashire Shield on um, one occasion, been to the final on a couple of occasions. We sort of won the West Lanks League once, which obviously made us move up into, into the counties. Um, you know, and obviously that then brings in a move from local lads, local players, and almost being like a, what you call a cycle team. Every 10 years, you would have a good team because it'd be a good group of lads. Then we'd, you know, drop back off and then come back again when when another group of youngsters come through. Excellent. Okay. And have you had any players come through that have gone on to bigger and better things that you can name? Any players gone on to make it into the league or...? Um, not off the top of my head. El Cummins played for us. He went on, well, he currently played, or he did last year, played for Marine. Um, and he played, obviously, in the um, game against Tottenham. He's Marine's captain last season, scored quite a few goals. Um, Niall came over from the Isle of Man um, and sort of moved to Lancaster. Um, and then our then manager, Barry Stimson, who used to be Lancaster's manager, he sort of uh, took him on board. And, uh, you know, he's obviously gone on to sort of bigger things in that respect. Okay. And um, I know it's been a it's been a crap couple of years with COVID and stop start. But in the last sort of full season that Garstang competed, at, how were you doing? Where, where where did you finish in the league? What what was the season like? The last full season, well, uh, that would have been, it was a bit of a... A turbulent season, if you like. Um, at the end of, of the last season, we parted company with our manager. Um, we held a series of interviews and appointed Andy Payton, former Burnley striker, um, to be our manager. Um, 
through no one's fault really, probably just not a good fit with the club and we didn't really fit with him. That didn't go very well. Um, and we played company probably after about five games, um, which probably from our club point of view was, I know we got a bit of stick for making a quick decision, but it, we just clearly didn't think it was going to, to work out. Uh, and then Richard Cookney, our current manager, came in, steadied the ship, um, and we headed towards a, a mid-table uh, finish that year, really. Okay. Um, and what are you? Um, what What are the aims this season? Obviously, everyone says they want to get up at the top. Is that pushing for promotion? Get up in in the mix. Ultimately, everyone's aim at the start of the season surely has got to be to be in the mix, hasn't it? You know. To be in the top five, pushing for a promotion place, um, you know, we, we realise as a club, um, winning the league and coming top is probably being overly ambitious. Um, but, you know, with the squad that the manager's assembled, the players that he's got together, on our day, uh, you know, we can give anyone a game and uh, probably beat anyone in this league. Um but our problem is our day, if that makes sense, we, we, we're inconsistent this season. You know, we're good one week, not so good the next week. Um, you know, if we can string a bit of consistency together, the top five is our, you know, our aim to be in them promotion spots. I'm sure that's what the manager would say. Um, you know, people in big teams in leagues as yourselves, you know, you're looking at competing for the top spot. I would say we're just probably below that in terms of where we're aiming to Okay, it's all about getting into a rhythm, isn't it? And uh, you know, there's no there's no easy games in this league. We know that, um, and especially with a lot of people who come into our place with the expectation that they want that they want the scalp. Do, do you know what I mean? But the, the, our lads seem to have got into a good rhythm early, and it's just about finding that the pace with the squad, isn't it? It's not easy. Yeah, it's getting it's getting that consistency. Confidence, confidence breeds confidence, doesn't it? You know, and you, you, once you get on a winning run, you know, there's no problems, is there? Everything's easy. You know, anything that would normally be a problem is just overcome. You get on with it. So in this league, if you can string five or six results together, you know, you are propelled up the league massively. You know, and at this stage of the season, the teams in the bottom three or four can string a good run together and end up pushing for those playoff places. Oh, definitely. And that's how this league is, as you say. There are no easy games. You know, we played St. Helens, who have struggled this season on a Wednesday night, and it was a tough, tough battle, you know, and we went in front, we looked comfortable, and they nick a 96th minute equaliser. You know, that's just how this league are. No one gives you an easy game. Everyone's battling till the end, everyone's organised, and everyone's prepared to work. Definitely. And moving on to Saturday's game. For those that didn't come last season, because we had a very limited um, limited number of tickets allowed, what can um, our fans expect from a trip to the Riverside? I mean, obviously, there last year was fantastic. It was uh, 300, which came. Obviously, that was the COVID sort of restrictions. I think you sold about 220, and we had the, the rest. Um, I know this year we've given you a larger allocation. Um, you know, it's a quaint ground. It's a lovely ground. We're adjacent to a, a cricket pitch. There's a river by us. There's lovely views. You know, everything is um, is lovely. We've invested again in the pitch over the summer. Charlie and Richard, the groundsmen, have done tremendous work in improving the pitch and, and sort of spending money on that and getting it ready for the season ahead. Um, you know, we are a relatively small club, um, so we are putting some more things in place. Um, you know, some Porter loos are being delivered, uh, you know, to make sure we've got enough of those for everybody. You know, I'd like to thank uh, CNC Supplies in Collinson, one of our sponsors who's uh, lending us those for the game. You know, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes for this because this is crowd wise going to be far and away our biggest ever crowd uh, at the Riverside. Because um, you're only really you know, down two sides as well, aren't you? Two and a bit because you don't come all the way down yeah, one side, do you? You, you can't go down the side in between the um, in between the. I don't know why I'm doing that. No one can see. We're not the <laughs> crowd. Uh, in between the um, in between us and the cricket pitch because it's not hard standing. You can't go down there. So you can go behind the the goal at the River End, and you can go behind the goal at Pavilion, and then obviously down what 
what, what people will see is the tennis court side, the main side, uh, people can go. So it's three sides of the ground that pretty much we can go. And um, we've got a someone coming in to do some extra catering. So obviously the clubhouse will be quite small for the number of fans that are, that are coming. So someone to do sort of burgers and stuff outside so we can try our best to look after everyone. Your, um, your place is one of the ones that we always talk about because we really enjoyed our trip there last year, even though it was absolutely tipping down with rain. And um, the that Steve, who was on our social media feed that night, was up on that balcony in, in the in the changing rooms in in his Eskimo coat with his laptop in his laptop shield. And I, I was up and down. We, we, we call it the balcony of doom because um, everyone was just so wet but we had such a good time and it was such a good night but I don't think the players legs did because it was the pitch was that wet wasn't it? it was they were all knackered after after the game uh, you weren't too bad you won 5-1 well that was my next uh, my next point so we played you twice last season one of the only clubs that we did and it was 5-1 at your place Tom Greaves with a hat trick of penalties uh, and then 3-1 at ours if I remember rightly yeah. Surely, surely on Saturday, the manager's just going to stick them on your changing room walls and say, go and fix it, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, in the first game, you were comfortable winners. You know, I think we were a bit overawed by the crowd. Some players reacted to that. Um, the referee I was possibly a bit overawed as well with one of the penalties. Um, you know, but you were comfortable. I thought in the second game at your place, we were a lot more competitive um, we took the lead probably against the run of play um, but every time we went forward we looked like we could get something I accept we didn't go forward on a, on a regular basis we were so good at pressure and playing you on the counter but at your place I think we were always in the game I think it was a late oh, one that killed us to make it to make it 3-1 was, uh, it, was, it, uh, was it against you did we get the goalkeeper sent off or was that against Chatterton I think it that was wasn't against us. I think that was Chatterton um, yeah. No, I, it, I definitely agree with you there. The second game was definitely a lot closer. Um, and we're expecting a close game on Saturday as well, I think. Uh, we, we can't wait, really. I mean, is, this, is your style of football, has he put any, any changes in for this season? Are they playing new system? I know Argaff has tried a couple of different systems over the pre-season and in the first couple of games. Uh, well, he's tweaked about. We've had three at the back some games. We've had four at the back other games. Um, and that has sort of partly depended on personnel, who's available um, and that sort of stuff. Um, but no, we, we, we try and play football, you know, um, all the time he wants to play, play attacking football, you know, get the boys on the ball, get them passing and get them moving. Now, whether he adapts the style because of yourselves on, on, on Saturday I, you know I don't know that um, but you know we will we've got some good players you know and we'll, we'll look to play football I would imagine and, and give you a good game excellent well I'll close it off there and I'll uh, I wish you luck for, for Saturday I'll do a dance to the sun gods to make sure that we're not needing our umbrellas again even though I have told Adam our head of media to pat the gazebo um, just, just in case. One thing I'm, sorry, the one thing I might need to add to your fans is parking because the car park at the uh, the pain display car park is now a bit small because they've built on it that people may need to get in early to make sure they can get parked on, on the streets or on some other car parks and get to the ground and, and, and sort of get in because it will be a bigger crowd than what we used to. You know, we'll do our best to get everyone in as quick as we can, but I'd advise people to get in you know, give themselves plenty of time. Yeah, because there's only enough room parking for players and match officials, isn't there, at the at the ground, at, so... At the ground, yes. Yeah, so please be respectful to the uh, to the neighbours as well if you have to park on the streets. And, um, no, we're looking forward to a good time on Saturday and uh, I'll hopefully see you then. Brilliant, thanks a lot. See Cheers for then. coming on. See ya. Thank you very much to Mark for coming on the show and talking to us about this weekend's game. What a gent, what a great guy. We look forward to our trip to the Riverside. This game is ticket only. There are about 250, 300 tickets left at berryafc.uk 
forward slash tickets. Grab yours. Let's make it a banging day out. Hopefully it won't be raining like last season. I'm still trying to dry off from being on the balcony of doom. Um, Terrace, I've announced the new merch line with the lovely Away kit on there this today. The, there'll be a link to that in the description. And um, yeah, I'll be back soon. Goodbye.